guys. It's Sync. Today I'm here in my Guilds HQ office, whatever you want to call it, with another class design. And just like any other class design, I need you to let me know what you think about the class and if it's legit for a QW or not. Alright, the first class starts right here. Alright guys, the class is called Bladecaster. This is a fighter based class designed and mainly focusing on your auto attack and using your skills to choose what form or stance you want to fight in to help you prolong your fighting abilities. Alright, let's get into it. The enhancement stats is your beefy fighter enhancement like um, the Dragon Lord, Berserker, Lycan. It's not your normal fighter like Warrior, Alpha Omega, etc, etc. Your hits are a little bit more beefy, you have a little bit more dexterity, and just an overall stronger fighter attack, fighter stat build. Alright, let's talk about the first skill, the auto attack. Like I said, this class revolves around this auto attack, so it's a little bit crazy and I'll explain to you exactly what it does. Alright, it's called dual wielding. If sword birth is in effect, it allows you to wield two swords at once, hitting up the two people with the effects from the swords for 15 seconds. If attacking one person, your auto attack is cut in half, doing automatically double damage to the opponent. Each auto attack slightly increases the effects of the swords you respond for the duration. Two second cooldown, physical skill and range is close. Basically what this is, one of the skills is called sword birth. If this is in play, it allows you to attack two people at once, basically like a Chaos Blight. It's very similar to Chaos Blight. Your, your effects of the sword get stronger, but not the damage. And I'll tell you exactly what that means when I get to the next skill. But if you're facing, if you're attacking one person, and your cooldowns automatically cut in half, then you have a one second cooldown. So you're hitting this person with BP auto attack for one second cooldown, which is absolutely crazy with constant damage applying onto the opponent. Alright, the next skill is Sword Birth. Spawns a random set of magical blades at your will, adding the magical effects to cripple your opponent. The user can only spawn two at a time for the duration. Mana 18. Cool down 12 seconds. This is a physical skill and the range of stats. Basically, what this is, you spawn swords in your hands, and each there's six magical swords, and when you spawn them, they apply to your duel and make you allow them to hit two people at once, and they give you each side of debuffs from each sword. Or if you're fighting two people, one, let's say you got one person on the left, you got one person on the right. The left person will get the left sword, and the right person will get the right sword, and they get each debuff from those swords. Alright, let me tell you the six swords. Now these swords are paired up to each other. They can't be switched. They have to be this and this, and that and that. They can't be swapped with the pairs of the blades. The first pair is Blade of Seer and Blade of Frost. Blade of Seer applies a DOT on the opponent, and Blade of Frost lowers the haste. These two swords are together. Now the DOT is not a lot, it starts around 20, and it gains, it gains about 10 every time. Every time your auto attack lays on the opponent, which is not a lot. It's not supposed to be a lot, due to how much power dual wood it can do on a single target. In the haste, each, each debuff does 5%. Each time the, um, the auto attack is successfully hit on the opponent. So let's say you hit the opponent seven times within the duration with Blade of Frost up. That means they're gonna have a 35% HD buff until it's over. Alright. This next set is Blade of Blood and Blade of Arcane. Blade of Blood slightly drains health from the opponent each time you successfully hit them with the auto attack. It's not a lot. It's not supposed to be a lot, but it slightly gets stronger as more and more this blade hits in succession. It slightly build up more, more health build for yourself. It's actually really good when you're fighting soloing bosses or just in trying to keep yourself alive. Blade of Arcane lowers the chance to dodge. Meaning, if you hit this on the opponent and you keep on hitting this in succession, their ability to dodge will slightly hinder more and more for the duration. Uh, the next two set, I mean the last set is um, Blade of Greed and Blade of Illusion. Blade of Greed raises the target's mana cost by, uh, like I said, all debuffs are 
and Blade of Illusion lowers the hit chance. Now, let's say if you hit all in succession, you can only hit seven times each in succession since the buff only lasts for 15 seconds. So, now when you think about it, seven times five is 35. So now their mana cost is gonna be increased by 35% and their lowers the hit chance by 35%. If you land all these hits in succession, which is absolutely wonderful if you're able to hit this constantly over and over again. All right, that basically sums up on the first skill. And now you see how this class of how this class acts. You can actually see, you got to the picture how devastating this class is. Alright guys, the second skill is Reflective Steel. Reduces your opponent's chance to hit repair techniques for 12 seconds. A slight chance to disarm the opponent significantly, reducing their physical damage for the duration. And this replaces Dance of Swords, which is another skill that's about to come up. Mana 23, cooldown 21 seconds. It's a physical skill and it ranges status. This is a pretty good status move. It lowers your opponent's chance to hit by 30% for 12 seconds. Now that, they're, now that they're hitting lower than they usually do, you have more chance to lay on powerful damage for the duration and has a slight chance to, i say about a 15% chance to disarm your opponent, reducing their physical damage significantly, meaning basically cut their physical damage down little, little to nothing. Now if you hit this on the opponent, now their damage is going to be so low. If they have a chance to hit you while uh, Reflective Steel is up. So who knows, man. Exactly. If you get disarmed up while Reflective Steel is up, your opponent's really going to have a hard time facing you in battle or even a monster. Alright guys, the next skill is Dance of Swords. Uplifting speed almost makes you invisible, increasing haste by 25%. Swinging your blades constantly not giving the opponent a chance to react, increasing your hit and crit chance by 50% for 12 seconds. And this replaces a reflective skill. Mana 28, cooldown 16, a physical skill and the range is, is a status move. Basically what this skill does, it's a pretty decent status move. Increases your haste by 25%. This, if you have a really good build, this skill can actually loop if you want it to, if you have a, a really decent build up on the, on the class. This increases your haste by 25%, your hit chance and crit chance by 50%. So now you hit faster, now you have a better chance to hit, and now you have a better chance to crit. So this is really, really good against evasives, and now you have a chance to fight against them, and the skill can loop. Even though you're not going to be dodging because you don't have a, an insane dodge bow, but you're able to go head up with them with pure damage against evasion. Alright, uh, let's talk about the rank 4 passives. The first one is Heavy Wielded. It increases your strength by 16%. Basically, this raises your attack power, your basic overall physical power, your auto attack, and your critical strike. Now, that's your chance to critically strike, but when you, when you crit, you'll hit a lot harder than normal, because that's, that's what strength is supposed to do. Most people don't get that. It doesn't raise your chance to critically strike. It raises your critical strike, period. Alright, the second one is Upsurging Boost. This increases your haste and dodge by 8%. Again, this is a, a more advanced fighter. The same as Dragon Lord, like in Berserker. So the dexterity is a little bit more beefier than anything. You know, like Endurance and other um, stats. It's more greater than Endurance now. Other than their regular fighter build, which is Endurance is higher than Dexterity. So this is raises your haste and your dodge, so raises your speed and your evasion chance. Now with the same build, the dodge and haste is pretty equivalent on the Dragon Lord builds, if I say so myself. So now you have a pretty good, decent, even balance with haste and dodge, making it a little bit trickier to hit and make it a little bit faster so that you can lay damage faster than you normally do. Alright guys, let's talk about the last skill. Blade Fall. Spaw's magical blades. Drop it from the sky, hitting up the three people for moderate damage. Doing slightly more effects than the base debuff from dual wielded for six seconds. The blades will be from the six swords a blade caster can spawn. 
but they cannot spawn the ones that are already wielding. Mana 32, cooldown 15 seconds. This is a physical skill in the ranges for. Basically, this is your decent AoE skill. Decent, excuse me, decent AoE range skill. Yeah, that's a pretty good percent of damage, 150. It's not a lot, because mainly this class focuses on its auto attack. But, the main thing is the debuffs. From the six swords I said earlier, each sword has a slightly stronger debuff for hitting on the opponent. I'll say it's about 20% and the DOT is around 100. So if you hit Blade of Seer with Blade Fall, it's going to be around a 100 to 150 DOT. And the debuffs will be 20% off the bat and they will last for 6 seconds. But you cannot spawn the ones that are already in your hand. Let's say you have Blade of Blood and uh, Blade of Arcane in your hands. That means those two swords cannot be spawned in Blade Fall while you have them in your hand. Because that would just be not fair, insane, and ridiculous. So to keep this class balanced, you can only spawn the ones that are not in your hand currently or if you don't have Sword Birth up at all. Like I said for the thousandth time, <laughs> this class revolves around his auto attack. And you use your stances, reflect the skill, and dance the swords to help you prolong your fight. Let's say if you're fighting evasive, you're most likely going to want dance of swords to increase your hit chance, crit chance, and haste to let you go head up. Or you're facing a class that has really strong powerful hits, so you might want to lower their chance to hit you by putting reflective steel on the opponent. You can't have both of you either choose this or this. You can't go lightning speed bursting at your opponent with damage and be countering and parrying at the same time as you see when I'm trying to pitch it for you guys. Blade Fall is a good attack range for AoE for farming and a good range to start off the battle with. So let's say you're facing a caster and you got a good decent range move to hit them like oh snap this dude hit me pretty hard range and I thought this class was some straight up close damage close auto attack range so this is a pretty good decent skill. Overall, when you see all the classes together, excuse me, when you see all the skills together, you see exactly how this class performs. And let me know what you guys think about this class. And like always, give me feedback and tell me exactly what you think about it and what's best for it. Alright guys, like in all my class designs, I put the similar stat builds and tell you exactly why it's perfect for the class and how it's um how effective it can be. Now, as you see them side to side, Blade Caster has more strength, more dexterity, and more luck. Basically, hits harder, makes you dodge a little bit better, your haste is a little bit better, and your chance to crit and your critical strike is raised. Other than focusing on endurance, a little bit more wisdom to increase your health and just increase your overall ability with the class. In my opinion, I think majority of the classes should be upgraded to the Dragon Lord like in Berserker build because not a lot of classes, not a lot of fighter classes are strong. Level 65 enhancements, mage builds, caster builds hit over 800 spell power, and while the basic fighter builds are hitting barely over 600, which is absolutely unbalanced, AE needs to do something about this. That's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments. This basically tells you how unbalanced that the fighters are and they need a good they need a little bit more love. This is exactly why I made Bladecaster. A straight up fighter focusing on his auto attack other than crazy skills that doesn't really even help it help the class out. And help it perform and fight against all types of classes at the same time. Alright guys, that sums up this video. Like I said for the thousandth time, share it with your friends. Let me know what you think about the class and this class is legit for Adventure Quest Worlds. If there's slightly things that need to change or things that you want them change, slight opinions about the class, let me know in the comments or message me on Facebook, Twitter, or even on Adventure Quest Worlds if you can whisper me or whatnot. 
Again, share with your friends. Spread the word about my classes. I just want feedback and and just criticism about my classes and are they decent or whatnot. All right, this basically sums it up. I'll catch you guys later. See ya. I am my father's son because he's a fan, so I'm a mystery and that leaves me nothing. Many times if you wanted to die, it's too late.